Yeah. Welcome back. Uh, now we're looking at uh, uh, the fact that the president has approved a policy to retain medical experts within Nigeria. Uh, the national policy on health workforce migration, which is aimed at addressing the challenges facing Nigeria's health human resources. The coordinating minister of health and social welfare, Professor Mohamed Pate, disclosed this on Monday. Pate said the policy is made more than just a response to the ongoing exodus of health care professionals, but a comprehensive strategy to manage, harness, and reverse health worker migration. It also envisions a thriving workforce that is well supported, adequately rewarded, and optimally utilized to meet the health care needs of all Nigerians. Dr. Tuyi Mebawondu, a public health expert and publisher, health thinker, has just joined us. Good morning and welcome to the program, Dr. Tuyi. Good morning, good morning. Very happy to be here. Mm. Okay, uh, you've heard, you, I'm sure you heard what the minister talked about and this uh, approval from the federal government to keep doctors in Nigeria. I would like you to give us a general feel of what uh, the, the, the medical professionals are feeling now after this approval of this policy. Uh, it is that one that's the minister of of health and quality uh, okay, uh, consider the importance of human resources for health. Um, I can tell you, the most important thing in healthcare is actually the human resources, like in your studio now, you can move very quickly in that studio, it becomes an hospital. You can move a medical person to a pool, hotel, it becomes an hospital. So now it's important that the human resources for health is so central to health outcomes. Now, uh, the National Human Resources health for Health uh, program is actually to manage to harness and reverse the human uh, health workforce uh, migration. And of course, they are looking at that by trying to improve the working conditions for health workers, um, to, to enhance job satisfaction, to put uh, technology uh, centrally to the functioning of health and also to start to build capacity now. According to the return by what they call an exchange policy one on one. Well, all these things sound very, very interesting if they are achievable. Um, but here we are. I will get back to with some of those critical issues. Now, look at Nigeria. Uh, the two doctors we have, as I by the record now, it's about 55,000. That's by the record. 55,000 is that the latest record for 200 million people. I mean, you have a, a lot of works, a lot of work to do, a lot of health, human resources for health to actually put into the system. Look at Nigeria. 15,000 doctors left in the past five years. That is a lot of numbers that we need to find a way to deal with. Uh, look at Nigeria. We can only train 3,000 doctors per year in this country. And our shortage is 363,000 doctors as it is now. You know, 363,000 doctors. The state with the large number of doctors in Nigeria is the state with about 7,800 doctors. All over Nigeria with about 4,000 doctors or thereabout. So, because it's accepted, we need about 30,000 doctors to actually reach the gap. If you are training 3,000 per year, in the whole of Nigeria, your capacity to train. And then, when I thought that we will not get to, even if we to get the quite a number of doctors in it, of course, that means that <laughs> they have to do about 10 years <laughs> and absorb all doctors into Nigeria. So it's a Herculean task. It's not just going to be something that will happen by um, summarization and assigning a decree. I wish hope it works. And maybe this is the starting point. We look at how it goes on later, and especially given it <laughs> that. The push factors for those doctors are still happening in the general population. Um, now, if you are, if you don't have finance, because right now you cannot, if you because you want to compete with the federal government and do all those things to make doctors, to allow doctors to stay in the country, I can also say the same thing with Sanford, I can also say the same thing with Bayata, I can also say the same with other states that are that they are on that side, that their resources are so clean. So this that, that is number one. Secondly. The general insecurity in the country is still pervading. Now, 
Even if you have paid up to that, you know, this is a country still secure. Uh, we have other challenges. I think we to really carry that out. So we have to address both the issue with the general population and the issue with the health system for us to make this policy work. We can sell so many, we can do so many things that we are having the issue and challenges in terms of care. Because if you cannot train, if you cannot train the requisite number of doctors or health workers, you are not going to get all the systems you are talking about. And um, if a person decides to stay abroad for whatever reason, maybe because to help their children or to ensure security or to advance his career, um, it will be difficult for you to push the to come and exchange. And I see a few number of hospital coming to Nigeria for future wanting to um, set up big centers to help uh, um, the health system in Nigeria. In Nigeria, is not just the health system is a very capital intensive project, very capital intensive. And how many financial institutions do you see that actually you know, support the health industrial complex in this Nigeria, whereby you have um, a system of specialist hospitals linked together? Um, by forming everything for people, you know, how many, uh, how many, how, how many grants, how many, where is finance to do all those things? So there's a lot of <laughs> straps to achieving all these things that we listed. There's one to do that thing to see how it works. Wow, that, that means <laughs> even just approving whatever he has approved is just a tip of the iceberg because there are so many other problems that, um, uh, associated with the reason why people are jack buying from Nigeria. But you, you talked about Nigeria being able to train only 3,000 doctors per year. Uh, why is that? What, where is the problem coming from? Is it in uh, admission problems or is it, what is it that is making Nigeria train only 3,000 uh, doctors in a year? Well, um, if you want to um, train or you want to have a health, uh, the health workforce, the strong health workforce, you have to start from, from secondary school. You must do science, okay, to be able to enter into the health workforce in terms of the training, either uh, scientists, either pharmacy, uh, whatever, whatever, either nutritionist or whatever. You have to actually do science, right? Now, if you go around our secondary school, the uptake of science, deep science courses is challenged. Even if you do science, it's not only doctors that need science, engineers need science, computers need science, somebody need science. You have to, so first of all, the starting point is for us to acquire people education, science education, STEM education, science, technology, you know, and uh, mathematical education. So it's <laughs> mathematical education. You have to first of all go and take all those ones. Then secondly, you look at the number of our, of our training institutions, how many? The majority of them are uh, government-owned training institutions. Now, they don't have requisite equipment. They don't have lecturers. The lecturers with this one, they have it, they are striking every time. There's always disparity between that two and that two and all those things. Education, because it's a very important thing. I, I'm actually trying to see where this policy actually touch, uh, you know, touch on education. Education of health workers is at the level of university, not just when you have finished. You have to do sufficient number. You see, there are some doctors abroad because they have more than enough. You have to get more than enough for you to embrace a lot of specialization that we so desire. And then the training was the top notch, good enough that internet is helping to, to, up, to upgrade a lot of training and training between the very medical schools is helping to upgrade some training and exchange, which had gone before. They just had gone. I hope they are going to do it. But where doctors, even the last two years of their specialized training, to have to go abroad and be a part of the system, learn what is going there, then come back. So that even when the debt come back, you have to solve the, 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 the macroeconomic issues, the security issues happening in Nigeria. You have to be able to manufacture. Another key factor that is really with this policy will be the fact that look at us. We need special, we need drugs. We cannot even manufacture drugs sufficiently. The active pharmaceutical ingredients we don't have. Okay, we don't, if we don't manufacture an API in Nigeria. We have to actually import those things. As long as a lot of inputs into health depends on importation, I'm talking about equipment, I'm talking about specialized drugs, I'm talking about some uh, great training. It involves a lot of input, input, uh, input. 
you will, you will have challenge. How do we, first of all, improve one, your pharmaceutical um, um, part of the, of the health system? How do you improve the equipment part of the health system to see, especially what you can do at vision design is present? It will be quite frustrating. So, the, our teaching hospitals are not big enough, are not sufficient to absorb the um, number of those who want to enter the uh, workforce. You have um, 5,000 applying. The place can only take 200 or 300. So, what's, what, what, so where, where, what are you going to do about that? Support that. If you want to have a good health workforce. Oh, well, uh, if you were to tabulate these uh, problems you have mentioned, you've mentioned security, you've mentioned uh, education, you have mentioned the economic situation in the country, uh, every other thing that you have mentioned here, if you ha were to arrange them according to priority, because obviously it shows that this policy is not enough to keep people in Nigeria, because every other thing is tied to that. Uh, so what do you think as a follow-up, the government should start thinking about or doing, not even thinking, because time of uh, thinking has gone. What do they need to start doing and what follows next and all that? Because they can't lump everything together. So as a follow-up, what should the government start doing to make sure the policy works? Finance. 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 Um, if you want to change the health system, follow the money. Follow the money. Uh, because you see, it states, if, look at where here we are, we're still battling with the implementation of 70,000 minimum wage in the country. That's, that's quite, you know, substantially that this thing, we don't have such money. Now, by the time you are considering job satisfaction, open work environment, or the pet workforce, and you know that they just need, for instance, it needs about 30,000. At least that's the thing that has come out clearly as, and told us how many doctors they need, for instance. They need 30,000 doctors. That will have to that will have to be paid maybe three five million per doctor. <laughs> it's going to be the shock of their finance. How do you deal with that kind of situation? What of the state that cannot pay that number of doctors? You know because you know that money is very central to those doctors exiting your system. Okay, they are not getting that thing. Secondly, you are not having the people. Well, you need the money to pay the doctors. That's why I'm saying national finance. We need money to move equipment. We need money to alter the environment, the work environment. We need, you know, all those incentives that you want to give. We need funds to do. And you also know the situation of the fund of Nigeria. So, so if all of us are going to say, either we start pushing the National Health Insurance um, uh, Scheme to cover and, and be deep so that can happen in the system, or either we, we now have, like, people who are investing in. in, in and all that and other things. Now we're having investments moving to private investment moving to the health system. Because what happens in a place like America that we talk about is a lot of movement, lots of people in corporations, the health system being like um health industrial complex. The people are just there. Oh, of course that one has its own issue. Maybe some other time we'll, we'll have to be called that big that's the starting point where we have people working together and any chains of hospitals supported by system in the government. But I can tell you that I, I am, I'm trying to do health, health, health entrepreneurship and know the challenge health is facing. You cannot get finance, you cannot get this thing, you know, the return of the money is, is, is terrible, the exchange is affecting everything. So, you know, those critical areas need to be sorted and we have to get all this thing done. If you don't get all this done, I will just put your ad policy. I can tell you, well, okay, for instance, where are you going to get to train? Like, okay, um, in Nigeria, it's 3,000 doctors more now, as we're saying now, as I see them now. Where are you going to, where are you going to train them? Where you can only train 3,000 a year? Maximum well, 4,000 a year, let me be two generals. 4,000 a year. So, where are you going to get to train for just 3,000 doctors? So, let's, let's be, so you have to do, think about the finance. You have to fix the education. Fix the education, you know, before you now start thinking of. Workforce, and then the other thing you also need to do is actually, you know, do your, your what you call HR observatory, you know, whereby you then sit down and look at, you know, the movements, the attrition, the challenges facing the health workforce in your country. So that those are the critical things to figure out. Well, it is really unfortunate. Uh, on the headlines today, we saw national uh, health insurance 
Act, because you mentioned it now, a National, National Health Insurance Act, two years after states under-enroll, as 90% Nigerians still pay out of pocket. Will you attribute that to the lack of funds to the health sector or the um, unwillingness of the people to enroll in the, in the scheme? Yes, I, I, I can tell you what, um, I, 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 I can tell you for free. And there's there's a quite a lot of distrust. There's what we call tangible assets. Of, you know, sorry, yeah, it's called tangible assets. The asset that cannot trust you, cannot trust government, cannot trust the system. Okay? That, those, those assets are most important. Now, now you know why you are not only in the National Health Insurance as you that you wish them to. It's because of this challenge that I'm not sure that whenever I put this money down, the money we we are taking this bank for the box and put it down. I'm not sure that whenever I put this thing down, I'm a little bit such that at the end of the day, okay, I am going to get treatment that is I require, yeah, whenever I meet that requirement. And if you look at it between the HMOs and and HMOs, you see that there are issues. What are some of these issues? The of these is that people want to, they want to get to the uh, HMO, uh, they get to the hospital, treating them, the hospital is short, treating and cutting out on the kind of treatment. They created a lot of what I would call inequalities in the health system. Inequalities in the sense that here we are, um, you can you, you are good, you are this, like that. This client does not understand all those things. So in reality, the National Health Insurance Scheme needs to be fixed. And then what has been done is that the health insurance is being given to people that are that have tangible work. The informal sectors and those who are the villages account for more than 90 percent of Nigeria. So at the end of the day, if the health insurance will be able to move a lot of money to change the health system you want to change, we will be able to see a lot of people to treat and we yeah, just stop. Okay, so um, we are stuck right there. Uh, we're, we're talking about the importance of funds to the health uh, sector and a paucity of uh, trust, uh, so, so to speak, on the system and all that. Um, what would you say about the infrastructure anyway? Um, I know that you've mentioned it a little bit, but what do you, uh, for purpose of emphasis, the infrastructure available in Nigeria uh, to carry out the duties or your duties as a doctor uh, how do you describe them? Let me, let, let me just give a clear example. You, you, get, you get the challenge we're having now. Um, in recent times, we saw a lot of hospitals coming out and telling you that they are paying too much for electricity. That the, the cost of electricity is humongous, that they cannot cope pay for electricity. You saw that. Whether teaching hospital, whether private hospital, Either um, some of those corporate the bigger ones. all of them are complaining about the cost they are paying for electricity. Now, if you don't have electricity, how do you run an hospital, for instance? Now, you look at the state of the roads, okay? Now you want to move people, you want to actually move uh, uh, people seeking purpose to another. And the road is problematic, you are having traffic potholes, apart from security challenges on those roads. How do you get along to get those things done? So, apart from that, even within the hospital itself, you know, you need the equipment, you need to update them. Even a simple MRI, you know what it costs, you know, how do you now include that one into many hospitals? So, in reality, it's still a function of money and a function of investment beyond government. That is how we can start all this discussion. Okay, uh, I think this is where we'd have to drop it. Um, we do, do hope that this um, uh, hydra-headed monster will be tackled in the way that we will all be comfortable because it's not enough, according to what you have said, to just bring out a policy without looking at the, um, the other factors that made the Jaqua syndrome a, a thing in the first place. But we do hope that the federal government is listening and they will do the needful in security, in education, in uh, finance and everything related to the topic of discussion this morning. We'd like to thank you, Dr. Mabel Wondo, uh, for coming on the program this morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Let's commend them for at least for bringing this matter yeah. yes. forward.
Yeah. That we thank that God. will improve. Amen to that. Uh, we'll be talking to Dr. Tui Mebawandu, a public health expert and publisher of Health Thinker, on our on the policy that the federal government has just uh, made uh, to make sure that the Jaqua syndrome in the health sector is reduced to the barest mi minimum. We'll take a break now and return with our second hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>